should a protocol include? Protocols can take on any format, although your institution may have its own preferred layout. In general, they should contain the following sections. An abstract. A title. Version information. This is particularly important as a protocol should be a plan of how the activity should be conducted, which is then updated to incorporate any deviations to reflect what actually happened. A table such as this can be included in the protocol to keep track of changes and updates made to the document. A form of common version numbering is that large updates to the document can be reflected as increases in the version number to the left of the decimal point, Small changes can be reflected as an increase in the version number to the right of the decimal point. A protocol should also include general location information. Information on the investigators. This should include their names, institutions, and it is also useful to have their area of expertise. Background and justification. This section of the protocol should specify what the problem is, how will your research address the problem, what are the next steps expected to be after this activity? Who are or what is the target group and how is this group identified? And who will feel the impact of your research? A lot of the detail required in the background and justification section can be lifted from the project proposal. Your protocol should also include a literature review, details of how this activity contributes to the project's aims and objectives, as well as links with other activities within the project. Hypotheses. Statements about what you expect to see from the results of your activity. Potential impact. Who will benefit? How and by how much? Will the benefits be sustainable? Are there any negative effects to take into consideration? Activity objectives. These should be detailed, consistent and achievable through the activity. Methods. Ensure this section has enough detail so that at the planning stages, colleagues can review and comment on how the activity is to be carried out and also to leave no doubt in other team members and technicians' minds as to what they should be doing whilst conducting the activity. This section generally contains the following. Type of research activity, whether it's an experiment, survey or an observational study. A timeline for the activity. Specific location information, including how the locations are to be or were selected. Study units, whether these are households, fields, farmers, again detailing how they are to be or were selected. Intervention information, such as treatments or specific conditions set up by the research activity to observe their results. Inputs, this should include materials required for the activity. These could be fertilisers, seeds or translated questionnaires. Management. This is the detail of who is responsible for which part of the activity. Data collection. Which are the key response variables for the activity? How are they to be measured and by whom? A farmer or a technician? What are the measurement units? And ensure that there are unique identifier variables. Data management. This should include the details of who is responsible. A protocol should also include an analysis, reporting and feedback section. This should include descriptions of the methods to be used to analyse the data, including weight information for the key variables of interest. It should also include details of how the results will be fed back to those who participated in the activity. An implementation plan, including tasks, lists of partners and their roles, and budget information. Finally, there should also be a references section. A transcript of this video is available within the Data Management Support Pack, which lists the required sections of a protocol. For a more detailed explanation of what should be included in each of these sections, please refer to the appendix in Good Statistical Practice for Natural Resource Research 2004 by Stern, Coe, Allen and Dale or Section 2 of Writing Research Protocols, A Statistical Perspective, 2006 by Wilson and Abbas Kira.